This episode of Let's Knit Together is sponsored by Yarnmarket.com. Fabulous fashions, fast and friendly. So how did you actually get started in the knitting space? <laughs> you mean how I uh, learned to knit as a kid? Well, mom casted on for me 20 stitches, and she showed me the basics of how to knit. She didn't teach me how to cast on. She didn't teach me how to purl. All I did was garter stitch. All I learned was how to knit. But my 20 stitches became three all of a sudden. So I lost some, and I was really frustrated, and I tossed it aside saying, oh, you know, forget this. So my mom was really desperate to keep me occupied because I was one of those rambunctious kids. So she stuck a hook and some yarn in my hands instead, and really, I took to crocheting like that proverbial duck to water. So I started to crochet a lot more, and this was when I was about eight. And it wasn't until I was 13 that I said, I am not going to let this knitting thing lick me. I am going to master knitting as well. So I stuck to it, and I learned it. I picked up from books rather than mom because, you know, my mom has had it with me. And so I actually learned um, about knitting through books and magazines. And how did you get involved in designing? <laughs> Quite by accident, really. I mean, I think we all start the process to design our own once we alter an existing pattern. And so as a kid, being a rebellious kid, um, I would take a pattern and say, okay, but I want to change up this, change this, and change that. And next thing you know, uh, I'm designing something that's completely different. So I think that if you want to start designing, just you, you can start the easy way, which is what, the way most people do it, by taking an existing one and putting your own spin on it. But um, I think that um, designing professionally, um, I did not come into the business with that in mind. It just was something that I did on the side. I did it for magazines, trying to make my way through college. So when you have a liberal arts education, what do you do after college? Uh, would you like coffee with that, sir? <laughs> so I fell back on what I know, which was knitting and crocheting. So how long have you been designing? <laughs> the Paleolithic area, I think. <laughs> I had my first published design, I think, in 1981 in Women's Day, back in the day when Women's Day had uh, patterns for knitting and crocheting in them. Really, I was designing for manufacturers um, from 1978 because I was in school at the time, and I needed to pay for my books and stuff. So um, for manufacturing, 78, publishing, 81. Do the math. <laughs> so, so you grew up in New York, is that right? Yeah, born and uh, bred in New York City, um, can you tell? <laughs> and I think that the, the city offered tremendous advantages for me because the menu manufacturing sector is there. I had access to all the fashion, etc., etc., and the publishers were there. So it was a great advantage. What was your first design that you published in Women's Day? Um, back then I did accessories because I was still going to school full time. Um, I had to do things that were a little quicker, a little easier. So I did lots of hats, I did belts, I did I know collars and accessories like that. So now you've got a new book out. It's all about cables. Yes. So tell us about that. This is the Power Cables book. It is the ultimate guide to knitting inventive cables. And what it is is back in 1988, I wanted to solve a I wanted to solve a problem of mine. It was my own little pet peeve. I love cables, who doesn't like cables? But I wanted cables in a shawl. And you know, you want to toss a shawl around your shoulders and not have to worry about a wrong side. And it bothered me that cables had a wrong side and a right side. And so I began a quest on how to make them reversible. And in 1989, I came out with the concept um, and had it published. And that was to cable, not stockinette as we normally see them, but to cable ribbing. That's the simple, you know. But in the book, I cover more than 11 ways of doing reversible cables because subsequently I came up with, with a few others. Well, actually, that shawl pattern, I think I had the pattern, it was a yellow wonderful reversible cable. That kind of inspired a lot of things though, right? Did you also do blankets or something like that as well? Anything that has, um, that flips over, that you know needs to be reversible. Blankets and scars, shawls, even things like collars or lapels, cuffs, sock tops, hat brims, they're all in the book and um, if it flip flops, just like a politician, it should be in a reversible cable. So tell us a little bit about this project here. Oh, this from the book is phonies because there are three 
different ways of making cable looks. You will see that I-cord laced through um, some eyelets form a mock cable. We have a mock two-color cable, which is really an I-cord variation, but in the hood portion, this is also another phony reversible cable, which is done with a simple yarn over against a rib base. So it's the three phonies. Yes. So if you never really learned how to cable, this is the project for you? Exactly. And also it allows you to play a little bit more with color as well. And what about the bag? Is that also yours? Oh. This one is textured cables because it doesn't always have to be in stock in it. Here we mixed it up with a little bit of garter and um, it gives it a little bit of a gnarly texture. Um, and also, even though this strap is done in um, ribbing, you could do a reversible cable strap because you know how straps are, they always flip flop also. So we do have another bag that has that uh, two color reverse, reversible strap. What's your favorite pattern from the book? <laughs> Which child do you like better? <laughs> I mean, you can't ask, uh, ask a question like well, that. Well, which one would you wear more than once yourself? Um, I actually like the very versatile cardigan because with the cardigan you can wear it open, you can wear it closed, you can wear it collar up, collar down, cuffs up, cuffs down, and you know, three-quarter length sleeves are very hot nowadays. However, if it's no longer in style, you just put the cuff down. And so it extends the wearability of your wardrobe. You get more bang for your buck. So I foresee doing that in another color. It's shown in mustard, which is a beautiful color, not great against my skin tone. So I'm probably going to do, I don't know, maybe hot pink. <laughs> <laughs> this is quite a dress you've got here. Is this one of your own designs? Uh, yes, I just finished it um, uh, about two days before the show, and you know how it goes. <laughs> and so it'll probably wind up being published somewhere, but I love hot colors, I love bright colors, and you usually see me head to toe because I try to coordinate the shoes, the accessories. I'm not a tall person. I am five feet dripping wet, and I've read that if you dress head to toe in a color you will look taller so do i look six feet yet <laughs> <laughs> close you look taller than me at least <laughs> also i am a fashion uh, a fashionista so you know i'm constantly looking for the shoes the bag and stuff <laughs> so what's next for you uh, probably more books. I do a lot of teaching around the country. I travel extensively. I'm doing a cruise, a knitting cruise. I'm teaching on a knitting and crochet cruise to Bermuda next week. Um, I'm doing a cruise from uh, New Zealand to Australia, you know, in the fall. And so I am constantly traveling and most people will probably find me somewhere across the country or around the globe. Join us for our next live show Saturday, September 25th at 6 p.m. Eastern to share your latest projects and what you're planning on knitting for fall. Go to letsknittogether.com slash live for complete details on how to participate. Yarnmarket.com is now carrying a brand new Barocco yarn called Remix. It's a worsted weight Tweety yarn that's a blend of 100% recycled cotton, silk, linen, nylon, and acrylic, and has some absolutely gorgeous textured colors. Buttercup, Clementine, and Verdant are my favorites. Aren't they hot? It knits up great, too, with lots of texture and stitch definition, like this awesome bag called Sarkis and this incredible cabled sweater called Darren. I could really cuddle up with that. No, not the guy, the sweater. So check out yarnmarket.com for Barocco Remix and other new fall yarns. Keep up with Let's Knit Together fans on the Let's Knit Together Ravelry group. There's a button in the sidebar at letsknittogether.com that takes you right to the group on Ravelry. So Lily talked about her latest book, Power Cables, and we have a copy to give away to one lucky winner. All you need to do is leave a comment on this episode, number 80, at letsknittogether.com with your favorite cable project that you've done or one you plan to do. On September 8th, we'll pick one lucky person who leaves a comment to win Lily's book. Join us for our next live show, Saturday 25th at 6 p.m. Eastern, to share your latest projects and what you're planning on knitting for fall. Okay, you got too excited about that one. <laughs> You said Saturday 25th. <laughs> you gotta say oh, September 25th. <laughs> okay. It's a worsted way Tweety yarn that's a blend of 100% recycled. What's that? <laughs> that's my stomach growling again. Oh. Oh.
Uh, how do we stop that? <laughs> Let's do it again. Okay. Here we go. And action. <laughs> Okay, I have to. I have to get over the giggles. <laughs> Hang on, I'll get there. <laughs> Stop the camera. <laughs> Don't look ready at all. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> 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 